Hey everyone, doing the second part of the Stephen versus Mansour conversation at Speaker's Corner, we've taken it right back to the start of the video. And in this segment, Mansour's trying to convince Stephen, who's an atheist, that the visitation by Jibril to Muhammad in the cave is somehow a convincing story. So let's just jump right in. Reason to say that's why he cannot be what he claims to be. You cannot simply dismiss him with a mere dismissal. Look, I cannot simply say, look, you are not an athlete and you claim to be an athlete. Well, an athlete, a sportsman, for example, when you can demonstrate it quite easily, like, you know, look, I've just had this marathon, I won it, here's the prize, and I just dismissed it. Yeah, once again, a really stupid comparison. Uh, you can easily demonstrate if you're an athlete in a number of obvious ways, whereas the story with Muhammad being visited in a cave by a supernatural being, that's going to take a lot of evidence. So let's see what Mansour's actually got. So when the prophet makes a claim that he's a prophet of God, and he brings you proof and evidence, are you okay with recording, by the way? Fine. It makes a claim and provides proof and evidence for his claim, then one cannot simply dismiss that claim. One has to look. Well, you can dismiss it if the evidence is non existent or at very best completely rubbish, which I think he demonstrates it is in this video. Look into it and then say, that's the reason why I dismiss it or suspend judgment or, or accept what's it. What's the proof and evidence for the claim? Okay. Because, okay. I mean, the claim is that. Years ago, he went to a cave, and an angel spoke to him. Yeah. And then after the time, he remembered it and told other people, and it eventually was written down. Yeah. So the Quran has been received by the Prophet through an angel from God over a period of 23 years. It's not just one go and a whole sum, bit by bit and so on, because that's how it's easy for him. Because the Quran says so. Had it been like one go, you know, it would be very difficult for him. Well, I don't see why. Why couldn't Jibril just give him the power to remember it all and do it all in one go? Surely that's within Jibril's power because it's within God's power. So if you look at the Quran, the Quran provides two types of evidence. One is a negative type in which it offers you falsification test to falsify it. If you can Yeah, that falsification test is absolute garbage. And not falsify it, then you are going to be in a situation in which you will be struggling to explain how do I explain the origin of the Quran. And then it provides positive evidence that it's from the Creator. And then linking both, it will say, look, I cannot falsify it and I cannot not accept, rather than not accept, meaning I have to accept the evidence provides because it seems to be a sound evidence. Right. To give you. A yeah, it doesn't seem to be sound evidence. I mean, there's a million ways that you can disprove that the Quran is what it claims it is. It's full of errors. Um, it's badly written. Um, it's contradictory. There's there's loads of ways you can do it. Example of a falsification test is the Quran says, if this book was from any other than God, then you would find within it many discrepancies or inconsistencies. Which we do. They're all over the place. Okay. And we expect a book from God should be free from errors. Which it's not. Because God should be all knowledgeable, all wise, not making any errors of history, errors of prophecies, mistakes in these, describing the scientific uh, reality of our world and so on. Because that's what... Yeah, and he makes all those errors. The prophecies are absolute garbage. Many, <laughs> the um, history is nonsense. The uh, scientific errors all over the place. Mathematical errors. It's a mess. What you expect a knowledgeable creator God to have information within it? Let's see some of the um, some of the things it says. I mean, for instance, it might say, um, yeah. Well, say Muhammad went to, went to a cave 400 years ago, yeah? yeah. And an angel spoke to him. Right? He didn't know who the angel was at first. He had to ask his cousin or something, isn't it? A Christian cousin said that the angel was actually angel. Gabriel, Gabriel. How would the Christian cousin know this? But the Christian cousin wasn't even there. And Muhammad was a bit confused about who it was. So basically on that information, which is not really verified, how so Yeah, I mean that's a, it's a great first question. Um even if we accept the supernatural and that kind of thing, um this is just something that happened supposedly to Muhammad. He was by himself, nobody else saw anything. So just on that alone, how could you be so sure? 
Two very, very, very good questions. But two things that comes from here. Someone, we, we're going to talk about a bit of profits, uh, modus operandi, um, and understanding psychology in terms of this. If there was a case where... Yeah, his modus operandi and his psychology have got nothing to do with that question. At the end of the day, he could be the greatest character who ever lived. You're going to need more than that if you're going to claim you've been visited by an angel of God. Where someone is an imposter, a fake individual, pretending to be what he's not, pretending to be a prophet, we expect he's not going to come and say, I don't know. He would say, a fake prophet would say, yeah, God spoke to me directly, or the angel spoke to me directly, or something. He would be positive in assertion in making up this claim, rather than saying, I don't know who it was. Yeah, a fake, in the, the signs of an imposter is this kind of false confidence they bring out they're sure what they're talking about and so well no that can be a sign of a somebody who's not honest but like a common can easily go the other route and do this kind of version of oh you know i'm so humble um you know i'm so i'm so doubting this that, that can also be used as a trick in order to convince other people oh well why would he be behaving that way you know it's kind of a reverse psychology thing you don't think a con man has ever used that kind of trick the fake humbleness thing and so forth. Here is someone who doesn't even know this encounter. Who was it? He's not sure. He's afraid. Steve God was, God was actually wanted to speak to him and give him a, a very important message for the whole of humankind. Yeah? He wouldn't come out of that case speaking. I don't know who I was supposed to. I don't no, know no, no, no. Firstly, but, firstly. Well, yeah, I mean, you could also argue it that way and say, I mean, yeah, if, if this was supposed to be that important, the entire world was meant to know. Why does Muhammad start off thinking he's been spoken to by a demon? He might have had an experience. That's what I understand. He didn't know what it was. He has no prior concepts of revelation about God and how he's dealt. His community was a community of worshippers of pagan idols. Or some of them inclined to worshipping a creator, not the idols. They are called the Hanifs. Yeah? So we are talking about a historical milieu, a context in which there wasn't much of an import of monotheistic understanding there. Yeah, I mean, this is just nonsense. I mean, yes, there were polytheists in the region, but there were also Jewish communities. There were Christian communities. Uh, so the idea that Muhammad had no idea about God or revelation is absolutely rubbish. I mean, the whole point is his wife's cousin who, you know, supposedly confirmed that this was from God was a Christian. So how are you going to say he's got no contact, no idea about revelation or monotheism? That's absolute nonsense. Which was predominant. There's not lots of polytheistic mixed understanding. Some um, I mean, yeah, groups those, of those Christians, of some, some group of Christians in Nazran, some Jews in Medina and so on. That was it. Yes, you just contradicted yourself, haven't you? How would he not be aware of these things? And bearing in mind, he's supposed to be a trader. Um, so therefore, he would have had contact with groups within the region. And as I say, he's got a kind of family member who is a Christian. So, of course, he would know about these things. So he had no connection with them and they committed. Literally has a family connection to them. He knew he had no connection with them. There's no interactive learning from both or each other, or, you know, one from the other. He's no, that's absolute nonsense. That's just speculation on your part. Even if we take the Islamic narrative to be true to the word, you can't make that claim. This is just you trying to bump up your case and it just doesn't work. Historical documented. So when God has made him into a prophet, it's a new thing for him. So there's many things that he's learning. Yeah, it's a new thing for him, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't know the context of what this is. He was obviously brought up in a religious background and whether that's polytheistic or monotheistic or whatever, he understands these concepts of gods and supernatural creatures like angels and demons now through revelation so when the angel says i am an angel of god he's now trying to get a hold of what, what exactly does it mean to be an angel what is an angel and so on and so forth the again he understood what a demon was so how would he not understand what the concept of an angel is he thought it was a demon to begin with how could he know what one is and not the other remember these are concepts which are alien to well, the they're not alien to him mistake himself but the angel told him to read no no the angel didn't make a mistake no, this is no to recite no no, no. the word is the angel is saying Ikra, recite Ikra, yeah. recite yeah. proclaim read yeah. what he's saying i am not the one who's able to because he's not able to read because what he's asking to read is a divine
So why would Muhammad need to tell the angel that? The angel should already know. In script, divine revelation. How can he? So the angel then makes him ready. He hugs him. The angel the prophet. Him. Yeah, well, again, he makes him read it. Then why ask him to do it in the first place? If he know he can't do it and he's going to have to force him to do it. Yeah. So the angel was a physical being, was he? Yes, yes. In, in, in our case, the angels can take physical form. He came, he came, in our understanding, angels can take the form of a human being. Like he came in the form of a human being, sat next to the prophet, his lap on the lap, prophet's lap, and... The angel sat in his lap? I didn't realise that. Okay, that's a bit weird. He taught the prophet and his companions. So the angels, in their real form... All due respect to you, yeah? To me, uh, it, sounds, it sounds like it's made up by some... Look, look. No. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It does sound made up. It just sounds like a complete nonsense. All due respect to you, there's no problem. No, no problem. We, we, will, we will, you know, but take into account... He goes to the cave, an look, angel look. comes and hugs... He says an angel comes and hugs you. He goes to speak to his cousin. He doesn't know what happened. And Do, his cousin says it was a... If you... Look, look. Let's deal with first about being a fake or an imposter. Like that part. Yeah, let's dodge away from a summary like Stephen just made there, because the summary does make it sound really stupid. An angel came along, hugged him, told him to read when he knew he couldn't read, then forced him to read a revelation. And the initial revelation is kind of gibberish anyway, because I'm pretty sure it includes like um, saying that man is made from a clot of blood or maybe just a clot or a clinging substance, whatever it is. So, I mean, the very first revelation is absolute gibberish in the first place. A fake or impossible, no, no, no. maybe had a real experience. Wait, 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 wait. Stephen. Yeah, Steve made a good point there as well, because Mansell's immediately going into, oh, you know, he's a liar, whatever, he's an imposter. And Stephen's just making the point, look, it could be a real experience. People have all sorts of strange um, uh, personal experiences, psychological experiences, which they can't explain. So it doesn't necessarily mean he's lying about the experience he had as he perceives it. We're just saying he could be mistaken. There's few ways of understanding this phenomenon. One is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this individual, is a conscious liar, faking, impersonating, pretending to be a prophet, or he's delusional, sincerely thinks he's a prophet. Okay. Do you see the options? But he could be a, he, he could have had an experience. This that means what he sincerely thinks he's a prophet that's what i mean so he's deluded in yours well no again he could have really his brain could have really experienced whatever strange phenomena he was talking about that could have been for him an experience but it doesn't mean it's a visitation from an angel. It was just some weird experience, possibly a hallucination. I mean, if you have a hallucination, that doesn't make you delusional. It just means that you've had your senses have gone haywire or whatever. So, no, it's not the only option. The other, the other option is he could have made a mistake. And these dull apologists always do this. They try to make this false claim that, oh, he could either be you know, a mad or a liar. No, he could have just made a mistake estimation is deluded yeah. we can go through each one if we were to analyze each one and you will see that our excuses will fall short in saying he is like that to give you the opposite camp because there are some people who say he's impersonating he's a fake individual look well, how, that, how, did, how did his um his cousin was it Warwick, okay what how, did, how did he know sure it was um Jibbyo that spoke to him fine he fine there, so let's deal with that he first. It. so when he went to his wife Khadija the Khadija said, so look, I know you, you are not a bad person. You are charitable, you are truthful, you look after the orphans and so on and so All the things she's saying are positive. You would not be visited by a demon or anything like that. It must be something, a good thing that's coming to you, who's coming with you with something good. I know someone who's my cousin. Let's go and ask him what his understanding is. Yeah. Whether he's a bad person or not, or whether he's the greatest person on earth, is irrelevant to whether is the experience that he had actually, first of all, any kind of real visitation. And if so, how does that demonstrate it's an angel of God? And saying he's the most wonderful person in the world and he takes care of orphans, that doesn't mean shit. 
So this is, no, Stephen, as you realize so far, this is a an understanding of a person who's not impersonating on fake. It shows like he's sincerely believing what it is. Well, I mean, even at that point, he could have still been a really nice guy up until that point and then made a decision, well, you know, I'm going to try this on. I'm, I'm going to try this scam. I mean, you don't have to be some cartoon villain um, to be a, a scam artist. I mean, many people start off good and then do bad things later in their life. So, again, the, like the logical thought process that he's using is just so fractured. It's appalling. So no, I've not answered your question yet. Stephen, I, I have not answered your question yet. Relax, 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 relax. Relax. Khadija is his wife. Khadija is his wife. He knows the angels talk to him, that the angel says, I am the angel. He doesn't disbelieve in him. He's afraid. He says, wrap me up. Cover me up with the blanket. Cover me up. So cool. Because this afraid. What's happened to him is, it's like, imagine that if I give you an electric shot, you will feel differently. The Quran that descended on him, the experience that he went through is totally phenomenally different from all his experience for the 40 years of his life. So now he is really shaking. He's feeling shivering. This is how our historical report narrates. He says, cover me up, cover me up. So then as he describes to his wife, his wife says, I know someone who might know something because there seems to be a connection about this seems to be someone who maybe some yeah. kind of neurophysiological reaction. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. From what he what what the prophet described, she linked. Like, firstly, she acknowledged that he's a righteous person, a good person. Again, completely irrelevant. So it's not a satanic what they believed in, like a Satan impersonating or influencing him or you know, overtaking him. What are they called? Um, someone. That was what Muhammad himself thought in this situation and yet you claimed he has no idea about satan or, or anything to do with um monotheistic religion so again this is just more nonsense comes in you possessed it's not like that and yeah, you say it's not like that as i say i'm also saying it's not like that i don't believe in possession and stuff like that either but the point is you just saying, oh, it's not like that. That's just you saying it. Where's the evidence? She even said, okay, let me see what. Um, is the angel is here? She says, yeah. Okay, fine. She, you know, uncovered part of a neck, a clothes. He disappeared. If he was Satan, Satan wouldn't disappear because Satan is the source of all evil. And where's he getting that from? Satan wouldn't disappear because he's a source of all evil. How does that make any fucking sense? I mean, he's just jabbering nonsense at this point why why can't satan disappear and reappear to trick people where is he getting this crap from encouraging people to do all the evil things sexuality and pornography whatever what and he can't whisper in someone ear and be invisible while he does that an angel dis disappeared. when when she said okay fine let me just uncover a little bit of my clothes here yeah the angel disappeared at that point it disappeared yeah yeah so basically as soon as she's saying where is the angel he's saying oh he's gone i mean which is classic isn't it it's kind of like my invisible friend now so no independent verification that this angel appeared, even from his wife, which easily could have been part of a scam, but it hasn't even got that level to it. And to be fair, as far as I'm sure, every other time Jabril came, nobody else saw him but Mohammed as well, I'm pretty sure. So this is a really convenient party trick that he does for the next two decades. He said, look, the angel was still coming. He says, is he still there? He's not there. No, no. Nobody can see the angel. But how did you know the angel disappeared? You can see the angel. No, 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 no. The prophet. Yeah, exactly. How does he know? I mean, this is evidence against your case when somebody says, I've seen an angel. Like, where is it? Oh, it's disappeared. You can't smell the bullshit coming off that story. Said he's no longer there. The prophet is seeing the angel. The angel can be visible in his original form, or he can be invisible. He can choose. There's no way. Yeah, and so can my pet dragon. And you wouldn't believe me if I said that I had one. To verify, this is just no, 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 no. Stephen, Stephen, look. We are trying to understand the phenomena. Let me help you with it first. It's called a psychological understanding of the reality. No, it's called you jabbering nonsense about a story which is obviously crap. Then we'll talk about the scientific understanding of the reality, historical understanding of the reality, and then we merge all of them and say, where lies the truth? Yeah, not in Islam. I'm doing a psychological analysis now. Firstly... No, you're not. You're just wasting time. I mean, you've been asked very straightforward, simple questions by Stephen. He's getting to the point that there's no one who's witnessed this. We're just going off hearsay from Mohammed. And his wife's just like, well, you know, you think it's a demon, but that's going to make you look bad. So let me get my uh, Christian cousin in to tell you that it was an angel.
again, how can anyone be persuaded by this? The way our historical report says, she did this and then the Zavetti Buffett said, mm, and she's now she is being more and more convinced that this is not some evil spirit. Because it sounds like she's trying to convince herself more than anything else. Evil spirits will remain. Said a historical reports said this. Our historical reports. No, our biographical reports. Yeah, in other words, nothing that's confirmed outside of it. It's just the narrative that you've been passed down. Who was there to witness this? You're bringing in other things where then I have to address that and address... Yeah, he says, where are the witnesses? Yes, you should address that. Let's stick to one He's thing. There with his wife, him no, and his no, no, wife, he had no. spirits, him Listen, and his wife. listen. And a, and a Firstly, do you, do you accept the possibility that all these events could be narrated by the Prophet and then recorded by his companions for the posterity? Is there a possibility? Yes. Good. So yeah, there's a possibility, but that doesn't mean that that narration is true. And that's the point. That's the whole point in this conversation you're trying to get at. And you haven't moved one step closer to that. We're saying, just take that for now. By actually still scrutinizing up whether these records existed or not. It's recorded after the events. No, look. Like years after the events. The I, am, I am saying, for now, yeah, yeah. to make things simpler, to deal one account at a time, yeah, yeah. let's not question the historicity of these reports, because that will then derail our conversation to historical investigation. That's what I'm hearing. Well, to be fair, so far, Stephen seems to have been, the way he's talking, he seems to have been granting that, that, okay, I'll accept it as historical, but then let's have a look at the actual claim and see if it makes sense, see if it should be in any way believable. So I think he's already been charitable enough to grant that. But you haven't made any progress on that. You've just talked crap the whole way through. So, I mean, he's entitled then to, to, to push the conversation on because as far as I can see, it is going nowhere. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't, you can't answer every single tangent. You have to focus on the one. Well, it's not really a tangent. I mean, it's directly related to it. Um, but you haven't answered even the first thing he said. You've answered fuck all. And anything, questions like this, we can deal as it's appropriate, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Good, Stephen. As you say more things, I'll get more questions. No, no, but hold on to these questions. Yeah. Remind ourselves, it's an important question. So she took her to Waraka bin Nofal. Yeah. Waraka bin Nofal was a Christian, okay? And he was blind, as far as I recall. Oh, well, that was helpful. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's not like he could have seen the angel anyway, because it just disappears when anyone but Mohammed tries to look at it. But doesn't matter. When he heard the story, he worked out, he said, ah, I know this is, sounds like a namus, the spirit. Like they believe in spirits, Holy Spirit, for example, that brings in revelation. Yes, but some, some Christian making that claim how does that show that what Muhammad is saying is true? That's just somebody else saying, oh, yeah, this sounds like something that I already believe in a Christian faith. It doesn't mean that Muhammad actually experienced this or that his interpretation of that experience is what he's claiming. This is just like people say, oh, yeah, you know, I recognize that story. And says this, I wish I can live to see you today when you become prophets and when you convey the message and so on. So he didn't live that long. Okay. So that, excuse me, that was the whole historical encounter. That is the first encounter of the Prophet Islam to receive revelation. Then over the period of 23 years, the same angel visited him again and again. And every year he came in the month of Ramadan to revise how much of the Quran has been learned and so on. Right? But you see the question I'm asking though? No, 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 no wait, wait, wait. wait. Wait, 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 Stephen, Stephen, we will address all of that. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, Stephen's just brought it right back. How do we know whether this was actually Jabril visiting? And you can see the guy laughing in the background. Um, a few people in the first part of this um, said this guy was laughing a lot. And funnily enough, when I was reviewing it, I was just like, I was so concentrating on Mansour and Steve. I didn't realise this guy in the middle is just laughing through it. And it is quite funny because, yeah, Mansour is just incapable of answering that basic question. How do you know it was Jabril? All he's had in this video is uh, his wife said, oh, well, it can't be a demon, so it must be an angel. And then she got a blind Christian cousin to say, yeah, I agree with that. That's it. That is what he thinks makes it persuasive. And also saying that he thinks Mohammed was a good bloke. I mean, is any neutral person really going to be persuaded by something like that? I mean, this is piss poor. This is what the claim is. It's Jibril. Now, yeah, and where's the evidence? You and I don't have access to the Jibril now. We can't see him. We can't verify him. You are.
Well, no one does, and no one did. Apparently, it was just Mohammed's mate. Distant from the event. So you need to have a tool which is testable to say whether it's Jibril or not. If you can give me that tool, I will apply it and tell you. I think it's your job to give us that tool. It didn't, again, the burden of proof is not on Stephen. He's saying you've got this crazy ass story, okay, where he's been visited by an angel in a cave. What evidence have you got for it? You haven't supplied any evidence, and then you said, well, you give me a tool. I mean, how fucking ridiculous is this as an apologetic? In the absence of that, let's deal with the prophet's, his motives. Okay, I'm going to stop it here because he moves on to another uh, topic, although I probably will cover this in another section. But again, I say, Stephen, you did a good job here because even though he was talking a lot, you kept bringing him back to the pertinent questions. Where's the evidence? Why should anyone believe this claim? And he had nothing. So it just shows once again that Mansour, he talks and talks and talks, but he actually says nothing relevant. He just trying to chew up the clock. And Stephen asked pertinent questions. I didn't hear a single good answer to it. So um, I hope you all enjoy it. I will be doing at least one more part on this because there's some, some more good stuff. I'll try and cover the part between where this ends up to the bit where we're talking about the gym, which is what I went over in the first video. So as I say, if you haven't seen that first video, you should see a link at the uh, top right hand corner of the screen now you can go and watch that because it's really funny they're talking about the gym it's, it's a brilliant conversation so yeah um i'll have the next part of this up in a couple of days and i'll see you all then